death cleanup crewers, what's the saddest slash most disturbing case you've ever had to clean up after? I work for a railroad, and after a collision usually we bring in a service to clean up the mess. However during the repairs it's not uncommon to find bits of folk, usually it's like a knuckle or something small, but the company leaves a bucket, that we put it in, and they will dispose of it later. One of my welders found a wedding ring, that went in a special envelope, and was given to the family promptly. Another time they found a shoe under a car, that was several cars back. Either way stay away from the tracks the trains cannot turn out of the way. I responded to a single vehicle involved with a moose. The caller was the driver, and she had her young six-ish son in the back. They were both okay, but afraid and trapped in the car as the moose was lodged into the windshield. We arrived and, when we did the moose woke up, and kicked the mother to death trying to get itself dislodged. The boy had to watch the whole thing. We were removing him from the back seat, and he said my mom is dead isn't she? I'm a volunteer so I'm not used to dealing with things like that. It was heartbreaking. Edit spelling edit hash 2 for all those asking, we had no method of killing the moose. Also, it started kicking her the second our truck showed up so, even if we did have the means to do so, it would likely have been too late. The dude above my sister's apartment died with a faucet running. One morning, my sister's roommate saw one of those paint water bubbles in the ceiling. It burst and death water flooded their apartment. Everything touching the ground, had to be replaced. My father worked many years as a CSI. More than once a biker vs truck crash required a shovel, to scrape the biker remains from the asphalt. Once he found just a mustache still attached to the upper lip some 20 30 meter meters away from the crash. Not pretty at all. My father worked many years as a CSI. More than once a biker vs truck crash required a shovel, to scrape the biker remains from the asphalt. Once he found just a mustache still attached to the upper lip some 20 30 meter meters away from the crash. Not pretty at all. One of my friend's dad is a retired correctional officer. One he told me sticks out. He was doing rounds on the catwalk of a big block of cells. Everyone is out on the yard, because it was a nice day outside. He goes through some checkpoint to the next block of cells and smells blood. He gets around a corner, and sees a guy sitting up in his bunk, covered up to his neck with a blanket, looks pretty normal. But looking down the whole floor of the cell is completely covered in blood. The bunk is completely soaked with blood, the blanket is soaked in blood. The inmate had made a dam of towels against the bars of his cell to keep the blood from dripping out. He was completely white, he had slit both his wrists, and then slit his own throat ear to ear. Almost all of his blood was on the cell floor. Literally, half an inch of coagulated blood over a 5x7 cell floor. You could see the blood losing oxygen, going from bright red to dull purple, as it got farther away from the body. He was alone for about 15 minutes tops between everyone getting let out for yard time and the next patrol on the catwalk. The inmate had a double life sentence, and had just decided to end it. Was working as a volunteer firefighter in 2011 in a small town in New York. A drunk driver in a truck hit a high school senior who was heading home on his motorcycle. The kid was still alive, when we got there. Saying how he didn't want to die, I put a tourniquet on his leg, to stop the bleeding from his femoral leg, was pretty mangled I was talking to him, and trying to keep him calm as we put him on the spine board then he got really quiet, and said thank you for not letting me die alone then he died. Messed me up pretty bad for a while, how he just wasn't there anymore. I've been doing this kind of work for about 6 months and a month or two ago we did a job where a 12 year old girl shot herself in the head with a 357 while in her parents bathroom. You can imagine the damage a large caliber bullet would do to a child at point blank range. Even compared to other suicides there were multiple skull fragments and mats of hair of which, as a relatively new worker in this field, I had not become accustomed to it. No note, entire family was home at the time. We got there the next day to clean up, and we worked 14 hours straight with the mother one room away crying like a banshee. 
Just the thought that what we were cleaning up was the remnants of such a young child, it really sticks with you. When I was in high school a girl we knew used her dad's shotgun. Day after it happened we went as a group of friends to check on her sister. They hadn't had a crew to clean up the splatter coming yet. Door was open to her bedroom, cause none of the family could stand to even go near it so two of us shut it for them. My dad was a fireman. He said he always lucked out and seemed to miss the horrible shit. But he knew these two firemen who every year took the same day off in July. That day they took off was in remembrance of a fucked up case they were both at where a house was on fire, going up quick, and killing a few of the kids inside, before anything could be done to save them. After the fire went out the two firemen went in to get the bodies. They found two of the kids dead, cuddled in a closet, but they couldn't find the baby. They kept walking around looking for him when one of them realized they were standing on him, poor little thing unrecognizable. I was first on the scene of a small jet crash. Killed everyone on board. At one point I was helping the airport fire department crew haul their hoses closer to the wreckage. Things were still in fire around me, but not too much. As I'm walking, I think I was getting ready to step on what I thought was a big piece of half burnt foam. It was all anguish and charred. One of the firefighters stopped me and had me walk around. Later he told me it was part of a body burned by jet fuel. A few seconds later one of the medic crewmen said no, it was two bodies, the husband and wife together. There was a case like that in the village my great grandma lived in. Small town. There were a few decent really old houses along the state route that formed the main street she lived in what used to be the village gas station, unbutted, with an array of crappy and newer houses filling out the rest of the village. Very low income area, mostly people who commute to the cities. One of the oldest and nicest houses was almost right across from my great grandma's. Big almost Victorian looking blue house. Incredibly nice family lived there, it's with the grandparents, but their daughter and her family were living there, while they built their own house. Eldest son was a, but of a jerk for a 5y slash o, but generally a nice family. One day, when the mom and dad were at work, some kids from the neighborhood, set it on fire. Covered the back and some of the garage with gasoline and lit it up, while they were asleep inside. Two kids made it out, but both grandparents died, since they couldn't make it downstairs. It caught something in the garage and didn't get totally put out for about a day. By the end, it didn't look like it was two stories and an attic. Kids all got away with it. Nobody was charged. This was the third house in the village, to be burned down by the same kids. First with deaths. Everyone knew exactly who it was, but they didn't have a smoking gun and the kids had an uncle with connections. No police force or anything, so they had to rely on the sheriff. That's where the corruption was. Lots of great deputies, but the sheriff had too much sway back then. At the very least, no more houses were burned down after that. General knowledge that the kids got a no more of this shit talk from the uncle. Sobered up real quick, when they realized they were mortal to the law for once in their lives. My dad was also a fireman, and had a similar story, but with an adult lady, his most horrendous story was a 7 year old boy who was hit by a garbage truck, when they arrived garbage man and mother of child were just in agony, here the garbage man was backing up didn't see the boy on his bike and just crushed him into his bike, both were flattened. My dad is now 74 years old, and is just now reliving some scenes that wake him up in the middle of the night. I'm not a professional by any means. But when you work at a large apartment complex, you see a lot of people. Because police officers and actual professionals do not have keys to individual apartments, I will typically accompany them into the apartment for wellness checks. So far in my three years at this property we have found three deceased. The first was a suicide of middle-aged man that just decided to end it all. He bought a gun a few days before gun case and receipt sitting next to him. He sat on the ground and ended it all. Going back to the office, where his mother was waiting and seeing her fall to the ground in tears, will never leave my mind. The other two were older folk who died of natural causes, but both of them sat for 24 days before being found. A lot of people don't realize how quickly we start to decompose after our heart stops pumping. Your fingers, toes, ears, and nose will start to rot and fall off. 
I have a lot of respect for the people that deal with these things on a day-to-day -day basis. The few experiences I had put me in a pretty huge funk for quite a while. Murder slash suicide. Husband shot wife in the head while sleeping and then himself. Usually I just sort of zone out while doing them and not thinking about it too much, but cleaning the blood splatter off one of their photo frames of them and the kids with the caption world's greatest dad was pretty sad. Also did a clean up at a homeless shelter where the woman living there had drank herself to death. Someone at the front desk said their throat eroded from all the alcohol and they threw up blood everywhere. Midway through the cleaning their sister showed up distraught and started stomping through all the blood pools on the floor digging through everything looking for a note or anything sentimental left behind. Only found empty Svedka bottles and clothing though. Also very sad. Not me, but my best friend. She is the seventh generation of her family's owned and operated funeral home, and for a while she was doing removals. By the way, what a crazy job. Your shift is just to be on call during a period of time, waiting to go get a dead body. She did it for several years, before deciding it was too backbreaking, the schedule sucked, and the whole dead body thing. She told me the worst one she did, that it was the only one, that the smell made her puke. The majority of her pickups were old people out in the country who were hermits, or had little family. This one in particular, as she stepped out of her car she could smell it, and it got worse as she got closer to the house. It was hard to see through the windows, because they were curtained with flies. They opened the door, and were basically smacked in the face with flies and death, so they let it stand open for a while before entering. When they finally did, they saw what was literally just a puddle of flesh, bones and clothing underneath a hanging noose. I think the body had been there several weeks. The story was something like, an old man lived there, and had basically been estranged from his family. His only child lived in LA or something and it wasn't rare, to not speak for several months at a time. Very sad and incredibly unfortunate, but this happens more than we know. I'm not a responder, but I have a story. The smell still haunts me to this day. Background. When I was a senior in high school I helped a new older gentleman of our church move into his home with a few others. My church has a pretty good system of looking out for the well-being of other members and I would occasionally check on him. It turned out that he needed a quadruple bypass surgery and didn't have any close family, so he legally named 18-year-old me the executor of his estate. Surgery goes fine. I move out later, that year and he moved out of state, and we lost communication. Five years later I get a call from his landlord. Apparently we had both moved back to the same area without knowing it. The landlord told me that he had died, and they found his will, and my name still listed as executor. This six foot tall, 300 pound man died in his recliner in the summer. No one knew he had died for over two weeks. The landlord discovered him, and said he basically just melted to the chair. After they removed his body it was now my responsibility to handle his belongings, and get them removed from the property. The smell still haunts me to this day. My father-in-law was a retired battalion chief in the FDNY when 9 over 11 happened. He arrived after, and was attempting to find people in the rubble. Unfortunately he spent most of the time collecting shoes and the like, so they could be identified. He said sometimes the feet were still in the shoes. <laughs> Obligatory not a crime scene cleaner upper. My cousin owns a very large 150 units trailer park, and one of his tenants pulled a murder-suicide. My cousin being the frugal man he has decided to clean the place himself. The following Thanksgiving, the topic comes up, and at some point, he says in a thick southern accent, Man, it'll tell you what. You won't believe how hard it is to get brain out of shag carpet. <laughs> Military here. I work was working on the fight deck of a carrier, and we had a guy get hit by some propellers. Killed instantly. They gathered what they could, all the scattered chunks of flesh and bone from him, and put it in a bag then 30 seconds later rolled up with the power boss pressure washer, and sprayed was left of him into the sea. We went right back to launching and catching jets less than 5 minutes after cleanup wash finished. 
I understand why we did it, but still a little harsh to see in process. Thank you for watching. Please consider giving this video a like, and remember to subscribe, and hit that bell button, as we add new Reddit readouts every day. See you next time. Bye.